Hey, what's going on guys? I want to talk a little bit about some case knife stuff today. I was recently uh, sent my package for my uh, case membership. If you guys are not uh, uh, in the case collectors club, you might want to check it out. Uh, I'll see if I can find the website. I'll put a link to it. Um, but it's, it's pretty interesting. If you like case knives, of course, it'd be something you want to look into further. And I was also invited to this little get together. Um, this is the uh, collector's reunion for 2012. They put this on, um, actually last year, I really, really wanted to go and uh, I had no transportation. Now this year I don't have any transportation either, but I'm still trying to work that out. Um, it'd be really nice if I could make it. As you can see here, the dates and everything, it's July uh, the 20th. Um, and basically it's up by the, uh, the case factory, which is literally like across the street from the Zippo factory. So if you guys are into Zippos and case knives, this is something you should certainly attend if you could. Uh, it's July 20th and 21st, the so Friday and Saturday. Uh, of course, if I do, if I am able to work out some kind of uh, transportation there, um, I'll make a video of it. You know, we can do like a big meet and greet or something. It'd be pretty cool. I know Mad Bad Voodoo um, really wants to go this year as well. And I think it'd be a great opportunity for not only the two of us to meet, but to also talk some case knives. I think it'd be pretty cool. So yeah, I mean, here's the information on it. If you want to check that out. Uh, but I thought it was interesting. I want to show you the uh, the magazine here. And it, this goes on to show you all the different things that they do. And they have some kind of uh, like silent auction with some really, really limited edition type stuff. And it's just pretty cool. So anyway, what I want to show you in here is they're talking a little bit more about the get together. And by the way, this I might do another video showing you the, uh, the new lineup, some new stuff this year because I just got their catalogs and I wanted to go over a couple things I thought were awesome. But uh, yeah, here's the uh, picture of them. I might do a separate video on that, I don't know. We'll see. Um, but yeah, this is what I want to talk about. There's a, uh, a woman here, uh, Katie Shantz Sar. She's a case historian. And I'm just gonna read this here. It says, I'm very excited about the opportunity to once again test your luck at case historical trivia during the upcoming 2012 Case Collectors Reunion in July. To prepare everyone, I am providing some information on our knives and case history. In addition to identifying knife patterns and date stamps, here are a few fun facts to study up on. So I thought this would be pretty cool uh, to read to you guys. These are just basically trivia facts about case cutlery. Now some of these I know, I already knew about, and I will be honest on which ones I knew and which ones I didn't know. But of course I learned from reading these because there's a bunch that I didn't know. Um, but also here's just some information if you want to pause there. It shows you the uh, the different patterns when they were basically invented uh, for case. Pretty interesting if you're a collector, of course, this is all fascinating. If you're not into case knives, it may seem interesting, but who knows, maybe you don't like them that much, so it's not that interesting. But anyway, I just wanna read these facts to you. Uh, the first one is the Case Collectors Club began in 1981. That I did know. Case began working with knight designer Tony Bose in 1999. I did not know that was 1999, but I did know that they were working with Tony. Uh, Tony, by the way, uh, there's a nice, I believe it's an interview on Case's channel. If I can find that, I'll try to link to it as well. Um, but I'd love to meet him in real life and uh, do like an interview with him. Uh, amazing guy, of course. <laughs> Just a, a big, big name and uh, his, his heat treat methods um, also used with, uh, with Buck. It's just been amazing. Really, really amazing. And of course, all this collaboration work with different knife companies has just been really, really cool. Interesting individual. I'd love to meet him someday. Uh, let's see, the V42 was made in 1942, which I did not know. The Rust Lock was named after Rust Case, that I did know. Uh, Rust Case's herd of cattle was in John Wayne's movie Red Rider, or excuse me, Red River D. That I did hear actually in a YouTube video, believe it or not. <laughs> I, I didn't know that and I saw it in someone else's video and honestly, I don't remember who it was, but I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, country music duo Brooks and Dunn made their own case their own knives at Case in 2007. Didn't know that. The Eisenhower pattern, uh, which is uh, 063, is named after US President Eisenhower. You know, Dwight D. Eisenhower, that I did know. Um, Russ Case's farm in Sinclairsville, New York, was formerly owned by baseball legend Ty Cobb. That I didn't know. That's one of those like random facts that doesn't really mean anything, but it's still interesting to hear. <laughs> you know, dinner conversation, I guess, if you're a knife guy. Gum Fuddy was uh, the name of the rough black handle material used during World War II. That I did know, and I know they did a special run of some stuff that's commemorating that. Uh, first Case Brothers Factory was in a Job Case's home in Little Valley, New York. 
That I did not know. Um, William Russell Case was born in 1847. That I had no idea. Uh, John Russell's Russ Case was born in, in 1878. I had no idea. And 1965, the Case astronaut's knife went into space on the Molly Brown space capsule with Major Virgil Grimis, or excuse me, Grism, uh, and Commander John Young. That I did not know. But, um, yeah, I thought, it, I mean, you know, it's fascinating, like I said, to case collectors. And what's nice about videos like this is that maybe you weren't really into case knives, but some of these things kind of pique your interest a little bit. That happens with a lot of videos. I tend to watch videos that I, I stumble across randomly, and I get interested in things that I never in a million years thought it would interest me. But anyway, the point of this video, really, besides reading a couple facts, is to tell you about the event, which I think is going to be really cool. Hopefully I can make that. I'll, of course, let you know in advance. Um, but just to give the, the heads up to anyone out there, I mean, it's not just a knife thing, too. If you're a Zippo person, which a lot of people are, and I am going to make a conscious effort to make more Zippo-related videos because there's lots of stuff that, you know, different material I can't film. Um, but, the, you know, the Zippo factory's there. The, the uh, Zippo Case Visitor Center is really cool to go to. A lot of history on there. Um, some cool, interesting things to see. And they have their own gift shop with a bunch of crap in there, too, you can buy if you want. Uh, but the swap meet is awesome. You get to meet a lot of different people from all around the world, too. Uh, not just Zippo, I believe, has their own swap meet that's separate from Case. But, um, I mean, they're right both there in Bradford, Pennsylvania. Just awesome. So, anyway, just also want to give you a little look into this book here. And talk about some different things. This is an amazing knife. This is a, uh, the pattern here is a doctor's pattern. Okay, the reason it was a doctor's pattern... The one thing should be a little more obvious is that it actually has a tongue depressor, okay, a metal tongue depressor. Um, this one happens to be Damascus um, with the burnt stag handle, which is just phenomenally beautiful. Look at that spiral Damascus. It might even be uh, Devin Thomas Damascus. But anyway, uh, pretty interesting. Yes, you have your, your basically your long pen blade, and then you have a tongue depressor. In addition to that, it's called the doctor's knife because it had this flat bolster on the butt end. And that was a krill, uh, krill, that was a pill crusher, okay? So, tongue depressor and pill crusher. Pretty interesting. Actually, another frame in here, which I believe, I don't know if it's in the catalog or if it's in here, but I do want to go over it. By the way, the copper lock is a very cool knife, and I have a little, little history for you. The very first knife a company ever sent me to review was a copper lock, and it was Case Company, WR Case & Sons. It was a barn board jig cut copper lock. And this was way before YouTube. This is when I was on knife forums and I contacted them. I must have been 15, 16 years old. And I said, hey, I love you guys. Your company's awesome. Your knives are awesome. I love the opportunity to review one of your products. You know, would you be able to send me something to review? You know, and uh, I'm, I'm part of these, uh, this internet forum and I explained the whole thing to them. And this wonderful gentleman said, you know what? Sure. And he sent me one and I reviewed it for him. And I thought that was the coolest thing. So that's where my... <laughs> Knife reviewing literally got started was with Case Cutlery. And I still have that copper lock, and I will show that in a separate video for you. But uh, anyway, I want to find another knife in here. Basically just a folding razor. Oh, here it is. And I want to do a video on this in the future. I currently do not own any of the uh, razor models. Okay, but if you can see here, it's kind of hard because it's, it's white on like light gray. But basically, the tip of this knife has kind of a moon-shaped cutout. Okay, this is basically like a straight razor design. But that moon-shaped cutout when the knife's folded, you can actually take this out of your pocket and push this on the edge of the pocket to open your blade one-handed. This is very popular with people around wartime. Not specifically with case knives, but after like World War uh, One and World War II, a lot of guys carried these this type frame because they literally had one arm from the, the war. You know, their arms and legs were blown off and they're all messed up. So this was a, a pocket knife that was, pre I think it was pretty much the first um, slip joint pattern that was easily open with one hand. Really fascinating. I don't have one to demonstrate right now, but I, I hope to get one in the future. This one happens to be in a, uh, a jig, like purple bone. Pretty classy looking. But anyway, um, so here's the rust lock, which I just read the uh, trivia facts on. Rust lock is pretty cool. Again, this, uh, this long tail end on the tang assists in uh, opening that. Uh, very much like friction folder. You know, you see a lot of friction folders are very popular. I remember knives and stuff, uh, Kylie, that's pretty much where he got started. He took these, this Ford um, friction folders and started making his own customs out of it. And geez, look where he is now. 
yeah, it's amazing. I, I follow a lot of people on YouTube, uh, but him, of course, uh, um, Gavco. I mean, watching these people start off with kind of like, ah, oh, I just wanna, just wanna make some knives. That'd be cool. And like progressing into these awesome, awesome knife makers, and even uh, Tough Thumbs doing modifications. Now I, I see he, you know, started making his own knives. It's really, really cool to follow these people's progress. These could be the next generation of knife makers. You know, you could be, your kid can be into knives, you know, 20 years from now when you have a son or something, talk about knives and like, oh, I wanna get that knife from, from Tough Thumbs. You know, he was the, he was like the best maker. He's got the coolest designs or, oh man, you know, I wanna make a knife from Gavco. And you're like, Gavco, I just talked to him on YouTube. You're like, oh man, you knew Gavco? <laughs> it's just, you don't know where, 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 you know, the future is gonna go. And I see so much promise in so many of these knife makers. It's really, really cool to watch someone actually grow in their profession and their hobbies. It's, it's pretty interesting. So anyway, um, that's pretty much it. Just wanted to just do some stuff on case. Thought it was cool. Hopefully you guys can make this. Um, let's see, there's more information here. You have to be pre-registered to attend. So. Um, I would go to Casey's website to see if there's information on that. You wouldn't want to get down there and not be able to get in because you weren't registered or something. So, uh, I guess that's it. By the way, I stayed at the Best Western in uh, Bradford. And oh, if you do go to this thing uh, on Main Street, they have like a really old Main Street, like with the cobblestone roads and stuff like that. There's a uh, Mexican place, at least there was when I went there with my family probably, I don't know, like seven or eight years ago. It's like the best Mexican food I've ever had. You wouldn't think, Bradford, Pennsylvania, right? Yep, really good Mexican food. Um, they brought out like, you know, the homemade chips and they had a like a nacho cheese sauce, but it was white cheese. It was made out of like goat's milk or something. I don't know, when I first saw it, I was kind of like, eh, what is that? But then uh, I tasted it and it was amazing. So uh, yeah, what else? There's, I got lots of stuff in my mind. I can literally just sit here and talk and, and babble and BS for, for hours, hours, I tell you. But I'll leave it at that for now. <laughs> and uh, I will, uh, I'll try to make videos on the other stuff I talked about, uh, particularly more Zippo videos. I'm gonna try to do a lot of Zippo videos in the near future. So we will see what happens. Time always dictates what I have to do. And of course, when I set time to do something specific, things always pop up. There's every day is an adventure. There's always something new that pops up and you're like, oh man, and you never get around to doing stuff you really wanna do. Sometimes you just have to say, you know what? I have to go do this right now or it's not gonna get done. And that's what it's like for videos. You know, there's so many videos I wanna make and other things pop up constantly. But I still love doing it. I love how you guys enjoy watching it. So thank you again for watching and for your attention and your interest in the videos. Appreciate it a great deal. And I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.